Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new roguelike series. This is Brotato. Some of you may have already seen the demo of this game all over YouTube for a little while, but it is now coming out in early access on the 27th, so that should be tomorrow for those of you watching it on the day of release. And this is a game created by the same person that created Space Gladiator, is a series that I had on my channel for a little while and absolutely loved. A very amazing game, and I don't exactly know what you call this genre, um, but you'll see when we get into it. Got a lot of roguelike elements, but also it's kind of like a survival horde type. Kind of akin to the Vampire Survivors, 20 Minutes Till Dawn sort of thing. Those sort of games, and my god, I love this one so much. So let's jump right in. We'll start as our well-rounded egg boy here. Um, we get plus 5 maximum HP, plus 5% speed, and 8 harvesting. Uh, so we can jump in, we've got a bunch of different characters to play, but let's just go with a well-rounded. And we can pick our starting weapon here. So we've got the knife, um, the stick, deals 4% extra damage, uh, plus 4 damage for every additional stick you have. The cacti club, hitting an enemy spawns 3 projectiles. Uh, the ghost flint, plus 1% attack speed for every 20 enemies you've killed during the wave. Standard pistol, standard SMG, standard double barreled, and a taser. So... I think we'll start off just going with a standard pistol, and then this is new as well. I did actually play a little bit of this game during the demo, but I didn't do any YouTube on it because I wanted to wait until the game was coming out. And now it's coming out in early access, I thought, no better time. So I'm guessing this is some sort of difficulty thing where once we beat the run with this character once, we can um, essentially like use ascended modes, essentially. It says danger zero, so I'm guessing that's what it is. So we start here. I have enabled manual aim. This game does auto shoot, and you can have it auto aim for you as well by default, but I've enabled manual aim it will make the game slightly more difficult on me because um as you'll see the hordes get very plentiful as the game goes on um and that is gonna probably catch me out but i prefer manual aim in my opinion uh so we'll, we'll play around you can change the difficulty and everything in the settings which is really nice we'll grab range to start here um and then what we got here so we got eight percent chance to heal one when picking up a material i'm guessing material is the green things that we have here um, extra dodge, extra harvesting. Let's see what harvesting actually does. You earn 9 materials and XP at the end of a wave increase uh, by 5% every time it activates. Okay, so more harvesting would be good. We're not using melee, but we are using ranged. We could also reroll for just 2, and we can lock things in as well. So, I think now I'm going to reroll. We can get another pistol. I'd very much like another pistol. We also have the Thief Dagger. 30% chance to gain one material when killing an enemy with a critical. Or we could go with burn. Or we could probably go with both here. So this is our weapons here. You can have up to six weapons. Um, as you can see, you can actually combine weapons. So we didn't have to do that there. I just wanted to show it off. Um, instead of having two level one pistols, we now have one level two. Um, that's a pretty good way of doing things. Um, do you know what? I'll lock that in. I'd like to buy that next round. And now as you can see, we have a lot of things here, including some melee weapons. Which is really, really nice. But yeah, this, this game gets a bit crazy. The horde mode, um, just survival aspect of this is just so much fun. Um, it really does get a bit mental. From the demo, I think a lot of new items, enemies, characters, uh, all sorts of stuff has been added. Uh, I don't know how early access this game is. I don't know like how far it is off the full release. But it's got a lot in it already. Uh, I think speed is probably a very good choice here. We'll buy our little ducky, um, and then plus three. Start the next wave with one HP. Ooh. That's kind of scary. Engineering. What does engineering do for us? Increases the power of your structures. The um, other stats don't affect structures. Okay. So we don't have any structures right now, but I will lock that in in case we get one. I'm going to take this as a gamble. I realize it's a huge gamble, because if we take even a single damage, we die here. But health isn't super hard to come by. There's little fruits that drop, um, and there's these trees that can spawn that give you um, HP as well. But yeah, uh, one thing that any of you who have watched my Space Gladiator series will probably recognize is this game uh, has a lot of like the style of Space Gladiators, as well as some of the enemies and uh, characters. So it's, it's pretty interesting to see how some of that's transferred over. There's one of those pieces of fruit. I was hoping we could get that before uh, going into the next wave. But we can grab lifesteal here. I'm still up for range, to be honest. I think range is going to be really good. Range damage is going to be very good. We also got um, two engineering there if we want that. Um, I'm still going to lock this in. I think I'm going to take the attack speed. And I'm going to reroll the rest of those. 
30% pickup radius sounds really good. Okay. We are very good to go. And we get full health in this next round. So, of course, we are kind of in a, a bit of a weird thing of having melee and a gun right now. We can switch away from that um, later on. Like I said, we can recycle our weapons. We can merge them. We don't have to keep the same weapons the whole time. But now, as you can see, enemies have started actually shooting at us. So we're into the slightly tricky waves. Enemies are mighty plentiful already. Um, but yeah, that, that extra pickup radius is going to be huge. But I've been playing a lot of games like this recently. There's been another one that I've been playing called Soulstone Survivors, which is um, hopefully coming out soon as well. So I'll hopefully play that on the channel and that comes around as well. But this one, this, this one, I don't know what it is about this game. It's just got so much style to it. Um... I guess we'll take melee damage. We've also got another level 2 pistol here, which I'm definitely going to buy. Um, a landmine spawns every 12 seconds, dealing 10 damage in an area. Ooh, that sounds fun. And then we might as well grab the lightning shift as well, because why not? It's just more guns to hold. Um, so there's one of our mines. I wonder if a mine counts as a structure. I feel like it might. It kind of had a little blue thing under it when it spawned. Okay, this, uh, this knife actually, the electric one kind of zaps as it fires. So far, we've been doing pretty good at not taking damage. Um, as I said, the manual aiming, one one thing, sort of caveat of the manual aiming, if you play this game with the default settings and it auto aims for you, your guns can shoot in various directions at once. Whereas for me, I can only ever shoot in one direction at a time, which means it's a lot more focused to damage in the area that I'm facing. But it means that if I get like flanked from behind, it's a little harder for me to survive. We'll see how it ends up going though. But attack speed here is definitely for me. Um, we got shurikens. Ooh, we also got more. So let, let's take the shuriken. That's a weapon. Okay. Um, that's gonna be kind of interesting. And we'll definitely take more pickup radius again. The pickup radius getting double O is gonna be huge. I think shurikens definitely, uh, new. I don't remember seeing it. I didn't actually play a ton of the beta. I only played around two hours of it. Maybe three. Um, because I really wanted to save my experience with this game until I, uh, was able to play it on YouTube with the, um, the early access version. Also, thank you to Blobfish, the uh, developer of this game, for giving me a code. He gave me a, a, a key for this game. Thank you very much. But yeah, um, I'm just about to go on holiday next week. I've been to mention it in my Isaac videos a lot. Um, yeah, I'm just about to go on holiday, so I want to backlog some of this game for you guys. So the, these little dashy dudes, as you can see, are doing a, a, a mighty good amount of damage to us. But we're surviving just about. We, we really need to up our uh, HP here. Um, so we've got plus, plus 30 range there is really good. There's also just max HP. Uh, let's go with the 30 range. Let's take the max HP here. The Shredder. Projectiles 50% chance to explode on hit. Okay, let's, let's recycle this and grab that. And then let's re-roll and see if we can get something more HP based. I'm going to take that just because we just got a bunch of um, the whatever stat it was taking away from. I think it was range. We don't need as much range. Yeah, I'm interested in this explosive thing. 50% chance to explode on hit. I can imagine explosives are very good. I've not really used too many explosives. I think I did briefly get a chance to use the rocket launcher. Okay, our health is looking better. Those trees do take a little bit of a beating. I really like the, the manual aim though. Being able to focus fire like one area. It feels so satisfying to, like, fire a big wave of damage at one thing. These fast boys, they're definitely tricking me out here. I definitely need to uh, upgrade my speed a little bit, because they are catching up with me pretty easily right now. But we're able to dive and weave between the enemies. One thing I really appreciate about this game is the hitboxes feel very accurate. Some of the other games similar to this, I've always had a problem where I, like, squeeze through a gap between enemies and I'll get hit regardless. It always feels a bit janky, but this game really has done a good job. And there's that speed we were looking for. Um, crit chance is probably a good idea here. Start waves with minus HP plus 8 HP regen. Yeah, um, you regenerate 0 HP every 5 seconds. So, would that be 8 HP every 5 seconds? How would that work? I'm going to try that out. Uh, you re regenerate 7% HP every 5 seconds. Okay, that's how it works. Percent based. That's fine by me. Um, yeah, I'll also take that too. I think we're good to go here. Uh, oh, I just noticed our character is visually distinct. Like, the, it, we are changing based on the items we are holding. That's a really nice touch. I wasn't expecting that. That's really cool. So now we've got some bigger boys coming in. We are on wave 8 now. So wave 8 seems like the one to 
the one to sort of fret about, the one to prepare for, because these big guys have a lot of health. A lot more than I was expecting. We do start our round with half HP now, so we do have to be a little cautious. The big guys don't seem too bad because they seem pretty set in their ways. As long as we're, like, constantly moving, I think we're going to be okay. But I think we need, we still need a lot of movement speed. Okay, back up to 28 HP. I think this is, this is going to be a, the, the, the round that tests people. This is going to be, like, the, the build check, essentially. Like, how are you, how, how's your build going? Ooh, we'll take that. Uh, we found an item. I think we got, like, a little gift package there. I'm liking the range. HP regen, we'll go for more of that. We get a level 2 SMG here. So let's, um, let's get rid of the torch. Let's recycle that. We'll grab that. We could make a level 3 pistol here and then grab something else. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, um, let's combine those two and then buy the lightning shiv. 10% chance to deal one damage to an enemy randomly when an enemy dies. Let's lock that in. That sounds pretty useful. I really like the idea of being able to lock stuff in and um, being able to, like, re-roll things. I think it's going to allow for a lot of build diversity. I think there's going to be some really, really interesting builds in this game. I think there really is. Like, I think one thing I'm going to try and do, although I'm not going to guarantee it's going to happen, is whenever we play as a specific character, like if we start as a melee character, we'll try to build towards a melee run. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might I might randomize my character um, each run, or I might just play sort of in a loop like I do with Nuclear Throne, where I just go down the list. Ooh, there's a tree there. There's quite a lot of trees up here, actually. The trees are kind of tricky, because as you see there, you don't have iframes. So you go to kill the trees, and they take a bit of a beating. And you end up getting yourself stuck in a pretty bad position, because you're spend spending so much time trying to get the extra items or health. And yeah, with no iframes in this game, it can really, really... Damage can, like, come in pretty fast. So we'll take that. Dodge seems interesting. I've never, I've never really gone for dodge, so maybe we'll try that out. More trees spawn. That sounds very useful. Chance to deal damage to other enemies. Um, I'm going to reroll. Max HP, damage, armor, and speed. That seems awesome. Spawns a turret that shoots flames. Ooh, okay. That seems really good. Uh, and then we'll take that as well. We, we, we grabbed a lot there, but that seems really good. So now we have a turret that I'm guessing just spawns randomly. And uh, it's going to, I think, burn enemies, he said. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, it looks to be doing some burn damage. So, engineering is going to be really, really good for that. That's a build that I am very much looking forward to. Doing an engineering build where we just go for, like, turrets. Like, I, I, I reckon it's kind of hard to get one of those started. Um, just because... I, I just imagine that um, getting onto turrets early on isn't exactly common. Ooh, this is bad. Okay, we, we've been damage checked here. Fuck me. We're getting damage checked really hard now. Yeah, we're about to die. Oh my god. Holy, that was tricky. So, definitely wave 10 is like your key damage check. We, we just about survived that. Ooh, definitely another turret. 20% um, of your materials at the start. We need more HP, 100%. 25% of status speed while standing still. That sounds kind of good. Uh, let's get rid of one of these. Let's recycle it for now. We'll grab that. Um, I think I really need to go for HP. There's another turret there, though. I'd like another turret. I'd like another pistol. And honestly, I'd like another shuriken. Okay, let's just go with that. Our, our weapon weaponry is definitely significantly better now. Ooh, some new enemies. Um, not entirely sure what they do. All of our turrets are spawned in one spot, so I guess we want to kind of stay around them. Do these, like, buff up other enemies or something? I can't tell what, exactly what these guys do. They're, they're tanky. I can tell you that for sure. They are very tanky. But I'm not exactly sure what they're doing to me damage-wise. Oh, God, I just took a big hit there. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm trying to stay near my turrets. It's kind of working, but also not.
I like making noises when they die, I think. I don't know what that's about. One thing I'd like to see with this game... Oh, we died. Yeah, there you go. That's unfortunate. We'll do another run, though, definitely. One thing I'd like to see with this game is um, a slightly louder or more visual indicator of when you're hit. Um, interesting. So we can now go for a different character. So we could go for Brawler. Extra attack speed with unarmed. You start with one fist. Less range. Less ranged damage and less crits. That's full melee. Yeah, let's just let's just go straight in with him. So the hand does a lot less damage, but it gives us harvesting, and it has more knockback. Let's just go with a fist, shall we? So this guy, we definitely we, we get the double fist. We definitely want to um, focus entirely on melee here. And I think we probably want to go a bit more defensive than we did last time. I think one problem last time is we focused a little too much on damage early on when we didn't need it. And it, we suffered from it late game because we, we were unable to take much damage at all. Um, so let's go with HP regen here. And we got, what the hell's this? One max HP for every 20 enemies you kill. Um, that seems really good. We'll take that. And we'll also take the shiv. And then we'll lock that in because that seems that seems pretty good. But now we have a bunch of weapons. Okay, this isn't a melee weapon. I thought it was. I thought the scepter was a melee weapon, but it's not. So we're probably going to do very little damage with that, and it's not going to be super useful. We'll see what we can do. But yeah, we only start with 10 HP as this guy. Very, very low. I think the first, like, maybe six waves I can do pretty reliably pro uh, without taking much damage. But after that, it gets a little tricky. Um, let's try and build us some dodge, maybe. We'll grab this. Um, 20 materials when you pick up a crate. Hitting enemy removes... Ooh, that seems really good. We'll lock that in. Just try and build up some resources. Sometimes it might be better to, like, just save up money. I don't know. I'm not I'm not sure when, when to save it versus when to just spend it all. I think at the minute, spending it all is working out for us just fine. I think there is definitely times where saving it would be the better choice. Yeah, you can see some of these enemies just have so much speed on us that we really, really need um, speed increase. I'm seeing one thing that our knockback is very, very, very helpful right now. That's the main thing that's keeping me from getting hit. Beautiful. So speed is really good here. The Ghost Axe, 1% damage for every 20 enemies. We'll definitely take that. We'll take that. Let's lock that in. We might want to use that. So these ghost weapons seem to be a new a new type of weapon here that I'm liking the idea of. We already got hit by a projectile there. Okay, we've got a little bit of health regen going on. Not a lot, albeit, but it's at least going to get us back up to full here. Oh god, I've almost died already. Okay, good. Let's try and get this tree. I completely missed the tree. Oh god, the shooting guys are, like, tricky in this situation here. 5% uh, chance uh, to double the value of a pickup. Ooh, definitely going to take that. Um, how does luck work? You have a 6% more chance to f of finding items or consumables when you kill an enemy. Okay, that seems real good. 20 pickup range and 10 halves, and we'll definitely lock that in. Um, we'll buy that, and we'll buy that as well. Scissors. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to recycle this. I don't like it. <laughs> Get away. I don't like not having a melee weapon. I like having scissors, though. So, this ghost axe, I think it scales damage based on how many kills it gets during a wave. So, right now, it's doing 12. I think that will that will slowly creep up, from what I understand. Every 20 kills, it's going to go up by another percent. Which doesn't seem like a lot now. But, honestly, when we're killing, like, 20 enemies every 3 seconds, that's going to stack real fast. I think in these early waves, it matters very little, but late game, it's going to be huge. I was definitely noticing that speed is a little more important than I initially expected it to be. Um, like, getting through situations like that is, right now, not so easy. But later, later on, we have more speed. That's going to be really good. So I think taking 6% speed here is very good. Um, ooh, Flaming Brass Knuckle 3. We're definitely going to lock that in. Uh, I'm going to buy that. And I'm going to buy that. 
I realize that we might have to lock in that fist for a little while before we can afford it, but that seems really good. Okay, these little fuckers. Seems like melee on those guys is going to be real tricky. Oh, God. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, we do a lot of damage, so we are able to kill them pretty fast when we get near them. But they can charge at us, so we can't really just walk in a backwards line. We kind of have to circle around them. It is nice they do that little animation, though, where they kind of, like, stop in place for a hot second before they charge at you. It gives you a little bit of a reprieve to just get in there and actually... Oh, my God, there's so many of them. I, I think because there isn't actually, like, a, a, a need to kill them, I think we just kite them. And we don't really pay much attention. And we kill everything else that we can. Because I really think they, at the minute, have a very hard time actually hitting us. So we don't have to worry too much. Um, life steal, I guess we'll take. Speed, I'll definitely take. We still can't afford this. We'll lock it in. Um, we do have a level 2 fist here. Let's combine these two and buy a new one. And then we'll uh, we'll just wait for our flaming fist here. I really like the combined feature. I don't know if that was added in the full version or if that was in the bit, in the demo, but I never used it in the demo. It's very useful. I think it was after watching, like, Alexa and, like, Dangerously Funny play this game that I kind of understood how to play it. One thing I, I have to say now is our health is atrociously bad. Um, we have, like, very little defense. And our health is, like, we got, like, regen and stuff, but that doesn't matter when we can be killed in an instant. So, right now I'm a little bit worried about that. See how it plays out. Cause that you see that then? That enemy dealt six damage to me. You see, we lost our run already. Okay. Let's run it back with that guy. Um let's just, just do another brawler run. Um and we just gotta we just gotta play it a little different. So I think it's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve um early on in this game. We're gonna have to play a well, I said play a little different, learn how to play properly. And prioritize certain stats. Because I think at the minute I'm prioritizing the wrong things. I think I'm looking at weaponry. I'm looking at damage. But I'm not really thinking about survivability early enough. Like, HP regen right now just isn't it. So I think I take armor. And I think armor, you take 9% less damage. Yeah. We take another fist. Um, I think we take both of these. Okay, go. I really like this, the visuals of having three fists. It's funny. So the fire out on the scissors is definitely slower. They seem pretty good though, regardless. Yeah, we just want to take anything that ups our maximum HP. Really, I think, I think for like late game, you want to have at least 50 max HP, something along those lines. Especially if enemies are doing six a hit and they can hit you instantly. I don't know if range actually affects melee weapons at all. Um, I don't think it does. We'll take luck early on. Luck could be good. We'll take this. We'll take another fist. We're good to go. Pick up radius, I think, is huge early on. In any any of these games where you've got to pick up like resources to level up and buy things. I kind of like the fact that in a lot of these games, it's basically just you pick up the resources and you level up and you that's how you get your skills. But in this game, it's got this idea of having the extra shop as well as leveling up. I really like that. It adds an extra level of depth to, to, to being able to choose your build, so to say. Like, 20 minutes till dawn, a lot of fun. I played a, a good amount of that game. But the build variety got a little stale in my opinion, um, just because of how limited the choices were sometimes. Whereas that doesn't seem to be the case this time at all. Um, ooh, I'd love that. Let's let's grab that. Um, and let's buy that. Yeah, like that, that injection that we just bought is actually uh, an item within um, Space Gladiators. It like takes off your maximum HP and gives you more damage. There's very similar things in this game, but it's not max HP, I don't think. Unless it was, <laughs> and, I, and I made a mistake, but I don't think it was. Okay, so the shooty guys, of course, we've seen before, problematic. Especially because, as you can see, they're a little bit cowardly. They don't they don't push up. They get to a certain distance and then back off, which is pretty interesting. Okay, we've got an item there. Nice. Good, good. We will recycle that. We're going to take harvesting here. We'll take that, definitely. I think we're just going to lock that in. And we'll lock that in as well. Buy both of those in the next round. 
I'm surprised you don't have like a limited amount of lock of lock-ins and rerolls. I suppose rerolls are limited by the amount of um They're limited by the amount of money that you have, but lock-ins don't seem to have any limit to them. Which is kind of crazy, because they're it's really useful. But I like it. It's nice. It seems as well that some enemies like come and go. Like you'll notice this wave is like lacking um okay no, I was gonna say lacking any of the um enemies that shoot, but it is lacking a lot less than the other ones. Like, the round that introduced those enemies had tons of them, but now there's a lot less. Okay, nice. I'm gonna go with a max HP. Melee damage. We'll take that and that. And honestly, let's take that as well. Got a bunch of melee damage here. Our character's looking great. But yeah, it's probably going to be that each video has a has a mu like multiple runs within it. I just think that's the nature of this game. But I really like that kind of kind of fast paced play. You you do a run, you hop straight into the next one, you keep going. Okay, we're definitely more well versed at taking out enemies this time around. Su surprisingly, considering I've not really gone for damage based items, we are doing a lot more damage. I think that's because we just found better weaponry. I think going for a melee build is a bit of a like a lucky draw sort of thing of what melee weapons you end up getting. Doing a good job. There you go. Beautiful. Collect 2,000 materials I got as well. Uh, we'll take melee damage again. I don't really mind losing dodge. We'll take that again as well. Screwdriver here will lock in. I might want to take that because I can combine my fists to get a better fist. We're doing 21 damage on hit, which is really nice. And that's only with our fists. But yeah, I, I really think that one thing that's holding me back is playing with um, manual aim. But I don't know, I just, it's, it's more satisfying. I'll try it with uh, without if I if I keep e eating shit and if you guys tell me that I really should put it back on uh, automatic. But manual's just all the fun. The option's there for a reason. Like One thing the developer did say to me is um, he's not really tested manual aim into the late game, so it might fall off a bit and be difficult. And he said if that's the case... You can edit the like speed of enemies to, to more appropriately match the playstyle sort of thing. Like everything's tweakable. Nice. Attack speed, we'll take that, yeah. Um we've got a stick level two here. So let's combine. Let's combine, and let's go buy and buy. I'm going to take attack speed again as well. I think I think attack speed over damage is better. Oh, did we get the item that spawns mines? I did not realize that. Okay, so these big boys, I'm not exactly sure how hard they're going to be, but you saw there, the hitbox was lovely there. Didn't actually hit me despite going right next to me. I like that. It's more accurate hitboxes really saves you on uh, games like this. But yeah, so we're finally into wave 8 where we get the big boys. Remember, wave ten's the one where things get really tough. I think wave 8 is probably going to be the end of us, um, just based on my current HP right now. And we don't have a lot of regen and stuff, but I, I mean, I'll try my best. But these big guys seem like they're going to be a real problem. I mean, I just took 8 damage from one of them right there. You didn't give me any HP, great. Like, I, I want to get in there and, and kill all these little fellas to get HP. Ah, get life steal, but I just couldn't get in there. Right, let's do one new run. Um, Let's go and go back to the main menu and... Who should we pick this time? Who the hell's this guy? Uh, We got this dude. Plus 100 range with precise weapons, 25 attack speed. You start with a knife, minus 30 dodge, minus uh, 10 engineering, and minus range damage. I don't know what counts as a precise weapon. We'll give him a go. You start with one knife, so I feel like taking another knife is a good idea, but also a shuriken. Just for a bit more range, sounds useful. Shuriken does eight damage. How much does the knife do? We'll never know. I think the knife does eight as well, to be honest. Ooh, an item straight off the bat. It's very good. I like the way there's new backgrounds as well to play on. That's really nice. Again, we start with low HP here. Um, ooh, I'm going to recycle that. I think that's too too much of a gamble. We'll take a look. Explosive damage. Hmm. 
It's not very good now, but I'm going to take it and hope that it plays into something later on. If we get, like, the mines or something. I think as well this is another game where you can get the same item multiple times. So we could find multiple of that item at various stages. So we could find it, like, a level 4 or whatever. It'd be really useful. I'm liking the crit chances here. But, yeah, still not quite sure what, the, what we get the extra range and precise weapons here. Um, I'm guessing, does a pistol count as a precise weapon? Not 100% sure. Melee damage is good here. 20 range attack speed. Ooh, that's good. Um, we've also got life steal there as well. I think we'll go with that. We'll lock that in. Yeah, a little bit of life steal seems like it could be really good. Not that we need it right now. I'm, I'm imagining like a full medical gun build. It, while I'm guessing the damage would be fairly weak, would be really good to um, stay defensive. Kill 50 trees. I can't believe I killed the trees. Yeah, the life steal seems really good. We're healing up very quickly here. I love the way enemies spawn in. Uh, we go with more life steal here. There it is. Perfect. Okay. That is not what I was expecting, but I will take it. We've now got a rocket launcher, which means the explosive damage is warranted. I doubt we can hurt ourselves with this rocket launcher. I was just about to say I ought to find out though, and it doesn't seem like we can. So I do wonder with this game, based on what just happened there. Does the game tailor what you get in the shop based on what you currently have? Does it, like, tailor it to your build? Like, if you're using melee weapons, does it give you more melee weapons? If you pick up explosive damage, does it give you more explosive weapons? I do... I am curious, because the first time I've seen a rocket launcher this early on, and that was very, very well-timed considering, so maybe it does. It does fire very slowly, so I don't think we want to rely on it. Get more HP regen, more max HP. Um... We're going to re-roll all of those. Take that. Re-roll again. Take that. We'll leave it there. The shop's kind of hard choices. It really is. How much are we actually doing with the launcher? Like 20-something, I think. That was, yeah, 23. That's not a lot of damage, but it's the fact that it's in a radius that really makes it very good. I realise I shouldn't be destroying the trees unless I need them, but they could have uh, little crates in them of items, so... I want to get them gone before uh, the round is over. Some of these early rounds are real fast as well. Try and get all these pickups down here. Beautiful. I don't really know what the difference is between these two. I think the amount of materials that you haven't picked up during the last wave. Okay. It's kind of interesting. Um, More luck, I think. That's fine by me. I'm going to reroll again here. Trees die in one hit sounds super useful. 10% chance to instantly attract materials when it's dropped. So that's also really good. Let's go. Yeah, being able to chop down trees in a single hit. While we have a launcher, we're probably chopping down pretty easily anyways. One of the things that I always get, like, taken, a, uh, taken aback by is I go up to a tree to try and destroy it to get some HP. And it takes too long to destroy and end up dying. So, being able to destroy them in a single hit seems super powerful. Not that they're super common themselves. But there was that item we saw earlier that makes them more common. So, who knows. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Put myself in a terrible position here. I'm getting too cocky. I've got the launcher and it's making me cocky. Okay, we're good. That was that was tricky. Uh, I don't know what the launcher counts as. It is it just explosive or does range damage also count for it? I should, I should probably grab some range damage. I like that. I don't think attack speed is going to matter for the launcher. Actually, it might. It might, be, it might be actually great. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what that's what the launcher counts as. I think it's just explosive damage. I don't think range damage counts, but I'm going to take range damage anyways. I still don't really understand the whole precise weapons thing. 
Oh, flibble sticks. Oh my god. That was tricky. We definitely need more speed as well. It is really a very interesting balance between your stats here. There's so many stats that you feel like you need all the time, but you can't take them all. Done a really good job of balancing that. Oh, I do love seeing that. Trying to think what else do I need here with my launcher. I definitely need more weapons right now. The fact that we only have four this late into the game is pretty bad. We are about to um, enter the first damage check round as well. Hacktie Club. We'll take that. We'll take an SMG as well. Why not? Yeah, our weapons here are a bit, a bit messy. Hmm. We'll go with that and lock that in. And we'll carry on to the next wave. I doubt the Cacti Club's going to make too much of a difference. I didn't expect it to, but I'm a little sad that we can't one-shot these guys with the launcher. I, I, I was pretty sure it wouldn't, but it would have been awesome if it did. An extra item there. It's really cool that you get, like, that double double material pickup from the last wave. I didn't realize that's how that works. I wonder if you can, like, play that as a tactic. Like, leave them on purpose to get more for the next round. I wonder if that makes any difference. Or if it's just worth taking them when you can. I'm not exactly sure. There's definitely got to be some strategy in that. I think this game's a bit deeper than it looks like on the surface. So far, though, I'm having an absolute blast. I hope you guys are enjoying as well. This rocket launcher is doing a great job. Once you get to these waves, the rocket launcher really makes itself apparent as, like, a powerhouse. Because although it fires slow, it's taking out huge, huge waves of enemies. Uh, I'll take that, regardless of it being a little bad. I'm also going to take the dodge as well. Oh, Wandering Bot. That's awesome. Wonderbot. Um, that's a, a YouTuber that plays a lot of roguelikes and stuff. Spawns a little bot that slows down enemies near you. That's so cool. Wonderbot got his own little reference there. Uh, we also got another explosive weapon here. I'm going to trade in my knife and grab that. I'll also keep that locked in. Yeah, that's so cool that Wonderbot got his own little reference there. I love that. Turtle Melon reference when. I know Alexa also got a, a little reference in Space Gladiators as well. He got a little Alexa bot thing that uh, dropped armor for you. I think it ordered it fire energy balls. It was one of the two. But still, really, really cool. I love it when um, indie developers acknowledge like YouTubers that have done a lot for the game. Uh, I think Alexa and Wonderbot, people like that, that have got sizable channels. Really bring in a lot of, uh, of new people to the games like this. Um... That's always cool to see. I think Dangerously Funny is another one that played this game a good amount. I think um, Retromation has as well. So I wouldn't be surprised to see references to them guys somewhere in this game as well. Oh, gosh. It's okay. There's a bunch of fruit up here, so we're fine. Sometimes it's kind of interesting that it's, it's more valuable, like more useful to power through a wave of enemies. Like, just walk straight through them than anything else. Um... Let's go with lifesteal here. Let's go with max HP. We've got a taser level 3. I've never seen a taser level 3. We've also got another metagun. Um, let's recycle this and buy the metagun. And then let's recycle... I'm going to recycle the, the cat's eye club because I'm not really getting close enough to use it. Also, item discount is kind of good for later on. I don't know how good uh, uh, like powered up taser actually is, but I imagine it's pretty decent, and doesn't it slow enemies as well, which is going to be pretty valuable for us. That's another thing as well with this game, with the tactics of, like, do you do you always want to stay on the outer edges, or do you want to kind of stay in the middle? I feel like the middle is a little better, because spawns tend to be from the outer edges, so you're less likely to run into an enemy that's currently spawning, but at the same time, it means you can be attacked from all angles, whereas when you're at a wall, you can only really be attacked from the front of you. I have to say, manual aiming... Ain't going too bad right now. I really thought it would cause me much more problems than it has done. I say that, I do think I'm about to die this wave, but let's not pay attention to that right now. Oh God. <laughs> See, that's what I mean though. In situations like that, I think it was actually best for me to decide to just run straight through the center. Straight through the eye of the uh, tornado there. Especially when you have a lot of uh, health regen and stuff, like it's working out fine. Um, recycle. Plus 15 luck could be pretty good. Elemental damage, HP regen. Minus 10% enemies. 
That seems kind of interesting. Less enemies. Pickup radius is always good. Um, piercing damage can't go above base damage. I don't know what that means. Do we have a thing for piercing damage? We don't. I'm going to reroll, see if we can get anything good. Oh, laser turret sounds really good. Um, also take that. Right, let's lock in the laser turret. Oh, I forgot about these guys. So we're on wave 11 now. These, these dudes are chonky. Okay, so by the looks of it, the way that they work is they just get faster and faster the longer they're alive. You do have to prioritize them. Either that or they, just, they can just dash. We seem to be getting a lot of stunning power though here with our taser. I like that. I think having our double meta gun is helping as well for whenever we need a uh, pick me up of HP. Oh, I died. Oof. Anyways, I think we're going to leave it there. We unlocked a good amount there, actually. If we go back to our main menu, we can check our progress here. Um, see what we've done. But we can also see that we've uh, unlocked quite a few characters, including one all the way down here. Um, oof. I like the idea of having all these difficulties and stuff. So we actually got the unlock conditions here. Um, interesting. Okay. So yeah, I, I really hope you guys enjoyed this first little look into um, the new Space Gladiators game, Brotato. It's a very different game from obviously Space Gladiators, but made by the same guy. And an absolutely fantastic game. I don't even know what this genre is really called, but yeah, they're, they're fantastic. They're really fun. The game will be out tomorrow in early access on Steam. Do please go and check it out. It's pretty cheap uh, and it's a lot of fun. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.